listening to Pet Candy. You are listening to Pet Candy Magazine, April 2021. Welcome to the world of Pet Candy by Dr. Jill Lopez. In this issue, we introduce you to Emma Locke, also known as Emzotic. Emma is a British former zookeeper whose popular YouTube channel features tips on caring for unusual pets, including giant snails, hissing cockroaches, and bearded dragons. Emma is a lifelong animal lover with an exciting past. She was born in England, but her family emigrated to Hong Kong when she was a child. In Hong Kong, she worked at a pet shop at the age of 11 and later at a veterinary clinic. She has worked for animal rescue centers. And if that wasn't impressive enough, she is the author of Animal Kind, a best-selling book that features true stories of the incredible ways that animals keep us healthy and happy, both physically and mentally. As editor-in-chief, I would like to thank our assistant editor, Shannon Gregoire, and our amazing team of writers who bring their expertise to this endeavor. They have all made this issue possible, and I hope you enjoy it. Emzotic, Life in the Spotlight by Lauren Hodges Known for her insatiable love of animals and acting, Emma Locke has taken the film and animal education industries by storm, as over recent years after starting her YouTube channel, Emzotic. Her channel features dozens upon dozens of videos, featuring animals and critters of all shapes, sizes, and species. Her love of animals and educating others on them is inspiring, endearing, and intriguing. Let's get to know her. All about Emma. Emma Locke, or Emzotic, is a 32-year-old animal educator, YouTuber, actress, and overall animal lover. Born in London, England in 1988, Emma found herself fond of animals and critters from an incredibly young age. She would often catch lizards and varying insects to observe, study, and later set free, or keep as a pet of her own. She had this insatiable need to understand every animal that she could, and this was the start of her journey to internet fame. Emma and her family moved to Hong Kong when she was nine years old. It was here that Emma's interest in animals skyrocketed. She got her first job as a manager of a pet shop at the young age of just 11 years old. She wasted no time. This is the job that fortified her desire to work with animals long term. Throughout the years, she has worked at varying animal rescue centers and as an independent animal educator, hosting animal education seminars and later starting her own YouTube channel dedicated to animal education. Emma's YouTube channel. In December of 2016, Emma started her YouTube channel, Emzotic, which now has well over 700,000 subscribers. Her love of animals and animal education shines through in every video she produces for her channel. This channel came about after Emma worked as a traveling animal educator for several years. Whereas she loved that she got to share all of these exotic animals with several thousand people, she wanted a way to reach a larger audience. She needed to share these unique creatures with the world and educate people on their habitat, their lifestyle, and what we can all do to ensure their safety. When her channel gained momentum, Emma found herself educating more and more people about a wide variety of animals, ranging from falcons to hedgehogs to bats and many more. Not only does Emma educate people on varying animal species, but she also houses several. She's known to have ferrets, reptilians, and varying invertebrates in her home solely because she loves them that much. She does more than just educate, she houses, and that is what makes her utterly unique. As her channel grew in popularity, so did her rise to fame. Her love for animals will always be her foundation for success, but she is more than an animal lover. Emma is a well known actress who appeared in the movie The Human Centipede 2. Where can I learn more? Emma posts videos on her YouTube channel, Emzotic Weekly, but you can also find her featured on BBC World Service, 
Unilad, and in varying pet and animal geared magazines. You can also listen to her interview on the Dr. Hunter Finn Show by clicking on the link below. <laughs> We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Hi everyone, Dr. Hunter Finn here. You might have seen me on TikTok or Instagram at Dr. Hunter Finn. I want to tell you about my new podcast, The Dr. Hunter Finn Show on Pet Candy. This show is about things that interest me, bringing the most interesting news and events to you, and talking to really interesting and inspiring people who are trying to make this world a better place. Check me out on iTunes or a podcast platform of your choice. Five ways to make your pet a social media star. A.M. Kuska. We all know our pets are number one in our lives, but even better is making sure they're number one in the lives of other people too. If your pet has adorable ears or a melting gaze you think lots of other people would love to see, try your hands at turning your furry friend into a social media star. Here's how. Take exceptional photos. If you want your pet to be popular, you're going to need to put a little work into your photography. Choose simple, clean backgrounds such as the ocean, a grassy field, or an attractive piece of furniture. Use zoom and rapid shot options to your advantage, so you'll have plenty of great photos to choose from. Try different angles as well, and don't be afraid to get close-ups of toes or noses. Your fans will love it. Post often. If you post only occasionally, there are fewer opportunities for your pet to be seen. Every time you post a picture with some hashtags, they'll be at the top of the newest in that social media search engine. Every post is a new opportunity to meet new friends, so keep those photos coming. Stay active with your followers. If your followers love being in contact and check back to see how your pet is doing and for more great pictures, they may feel a little disappointed if it's always the same stuff. Even weekly posts might not be enough to feel active, especially with the fast pace of most social media. If you plan to post only weekly, consider creating and posting a schedule. This way, your followers will know updates come every Friday, and they just need to come back on that day. Use the right hashtags. If you're hoping to build a following, you'll need to find the people who are interested in looking at photos of puppies or guinea pigs. Try searching for similar pet feeds on the social media website of your choice and using the same hashtags. Although it might seem a bit annoying to constantly follow your post with a string of hashtags, this is the best way to get the attention of people who are actively looking for photos of good boys. Try different social media platforms. If you've been posting adorable photos of your rabbit for years on Twitter and get a ho-hum response, you might try the same photos on a different website. Your pet may do better on Instagram or Facebook. Your pet can certainly be a social media star, even if it's an unconventional species such as a lizard or a snake. Taking the time to show the animal's charming side can make a big difference. Whether your pet is a tail-wagging puppy or a grumpy-faced cat, it's possible to make him popular on social media. All you need to do is show people the character he truly is. Why Your Pet Needs a Fecal Test by Dr. Jill Lopez a fecal analysis is performed to diagnose certain types of parasites, including hookworms, roundworms, and whipworms. It is often performed during your pet's annual visit. If your pet develops diarrhea, your vet may want to examine the stool in addition to a physical examination to help diagnose the problem. A fecal analysis may help diagnose diseases like colitis, pancreatic issues, and inflammatory bowel disease. Your veterinarian may request that you bring in a fresh sample of your pet stool. The sample should be placed in a clean and labeled container and placed in a leak-proof plastic bag to prevent spillage. Alternatively, your vet can use a special tool called a fecal loop to obtain a sample at the clinic. The fecal loop is a long, thin plastic tool with a rigid loop at one end. 
it is lubricated and inserted into the pet's rectum, gently twisted and then removed. The loop catches a sample of stool for the examination. There are several ways a fecal examination can be performed. First type of test is a general visual examination of the stool sample. The veterinarian will look for presence of worms, blood, or mucus. Some worms can be seen in the stool. For example, roundworms are long, slender worms that look similar to spaghetti. Sometimes these worms will pass in the infected animal's stool. Another worm that may be seen in the stool is a tapeworm. The adult tapeworm is a long and segmented parasite. As it ages, it passes segments out the stool. These segments contain tapeworm eggs and, when dried, look like pieces of rice. Excessive mucus and bright red blood is often associated with colitis. Dark blood, often resembles coffee grounds in the stool, indicates digested blood and is often linked to stomach ulcers. Sometimes the vet may perform a test called a direct smear. In this test, a small amount of stool is placed on a microscope slide and examined. This test is usually performed in combination with other tests because it often gives false positive results. The most common fecal test is called a fecal flotation. In this test, a sample of stool is placed in a plastic container and a small amount of a special solution is added. The solution, when mixed with the stool, allows the eggs of parasites to float to the top. A clean microscope slide is placed on top of the brim of the container to collect the eggs. Fecal analysis is performed mainly to identify parasites. It is also used to confirm other diseases, such as inflammatory bowel disease, colitis, and pancreatic insufficiency. Rarely, stool may be analyzed for pathogenic bacteria, like salmonella. There are also specific tests that use a sample to diagnose viral infections like parvo and coronaviruses. These are usually only performed in cases where the pet is suspected of having these diseases and are not routinely ran. Fecal examinations are most commonly used to help identify the eggs of parasites such as hookworms, whipworms, and roundworms. It is also used to confirm the diagnosis of many other illnesses. With an accurate diagnosis, your veterinarian can prescribe the appropriate treatment. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Hey, pet parents. This is your favorite lifestyle guru, Renee Michelle, and I'm excited to tell you about my new show on Pet Candy. Join me and make some cute pet stuff. Talk about life and love and everything in between. Check out the Renee Michelle Show on mypetcandy.com and let's have some fun. Three unusual animals that make great pets. A.M. Cusca. When most people think about getting a pet, they consider a dog or a cat. If they're a bit more open-minded, a bird or a fish might come to mind. Let's take a look at three animals that aren't as commonly thought of as ideal pets, but that actually make great animal companions. Rabbits. Live in an apartment? Bunnies do very well in small spaces, can be housebroken, and are very quiet. They can learn to do tricks, and you can even show them in fun events such as jumping contests. They can become attached to their owners and be just as loving as a cat or a dog. Chickens. If you're looking for a pet that doesn't mind being left outdoors, a chicken is a great option. Silkies especially don't mind being petted, held, and snuggled. As an added bonus, hens also lay eggs, which makes them a pet that truly gives back. Rats. If you can put aside any disgust based on their reputation as vermin, rats make truly amazing pets. They are social, love to interact, and can be trained to do a wide number of tricks. Your rat can learn how to jump through hoops, climb onto your shoulder, run mazes, hold objects, and even play fetch. It's best to get a rat from a reputable breeder, one who breeds for health and temperament. Rats from a pet store are often feeder rats, where longevity isn't a big consideration. 
If a dog or a cat doesn't quite suit your needs, why not give one of these offbeat animals a try? They'll give back all the love and attention you give them and may be well suited to your living needs. Fun things to do with your dog, Lauren Hodges. Your dog is your best friend, your family, your protector, but they're also your adventure partner. Dogs love to do things with their humans, but sometimes it's hard to find activities to share, especially considering the state of the world today. So just like your dog, I did some digging and came up with some fun things you can do with your pup. The best part is they are all pandemic approved. Hiking. By far the most popular option, taking your doggo hiking will not only make them happy, but will also make you feel productive, healthy, and energized. This is a great option if you live in an area that has local trails, but make sure the trails allow dogs. If you do not live near any hiking trails, going for a simple walk through an area you've never been to is also a fantastic option. Swimming. If your dog is a fan of the water, take him or her to a nearby lake to do some swimming together. Get creative with it by bringing or renting paddle boards. They're big enough for more than one person, so let your furry friend tag along. If you're fortunate enough to own a pontoon or small boat, bring your dog aboard with you. Have a photo shoot. Hear me out. There is nothing cuter than a dog dressed as a bunny or a firefighter or even dressed to the nines in a suit. You don't even have to spend money here. Just find some old Halloween costumes or even your own hat collection. Lay a white sheet behind you and set that self-timer to 10 seconds. Not only will you create some silly memories, but your dog will have a blast. You could even turn your photos into a calendar. How cute would that be? Have a spa day. Believe it or not, there are actually spas that are designed for you and your pup. This is a great activity for older dogs or those who just need a few hours to unwind from that long game of fetch you played the other day. Pet and owner spas tend to go all out with their services, even offering doggy massages, grooming services, and snack boards. Go on a long drive. Perfect for those of you trying to avoid crowds right now. Taking a scenic drive through the mountains, along the coastline, or even through a city is a great option to get you and your pup out of the house for a few hours. Dogs love an open window on an empty road, so you cannot go wrong here. Bring some snacks for the two of you, find a nice place to park, and enjoy a little picnic. It's the perfect afternoon. No matter what you choose to do with your dog, they're going to enjoy it because the activity is with their favorite person, you. Whether you're taking them swimming, popping a fedora on them, or treating them to a massage, you won't be disappointed in the memories you create and the smile on your doggy's face. Supporting your vet. Show them you care during this difficult time. A.M. Kuska. Our vets are often there for us during the most difficult times of our lives. They comfort us at the passing of an elderly or injured animal, bring our pets back from the brink of death, laugh over our puppies, and share many important animal milestones with us. A good vet is an essential part of our animal care, but they don't always get the credit they deserve. When an animal dies on their watch, they feel personally responsible, even if there is nothing they can do. Rude customers can strike at their hearts. This is why those who work in the veterinary field have one of the highest suicide rates compared to other industries, and they often suffer from depression and burnout. Compassion fatigue is real, and it affects our vets as well as doctors and nurses in the medical field. We often neglect to say anything when things are going well, and we unleash our feelings when something bad happens. It's time we started taking care of our vets and supporting them. You're not powerless in the role you play with your vet. Here's what you can do to help combat compassion fatigue. Cheer the wins. Did your vet save your pet's life? Did he successfully give your grumpy guy his needed vaccinations without losing any fingers? Did you have a really great experience at the clinic with your pet? Send a thank you note to your vet. Make a call or send along a gift to let them know you appreciate their work. 
oftentimes your vet tends to gloss over the good moments, letting the bad moments crowd them out. You can help by being a voice for those good times. Be kind during your appointment. Sometimes a dog that came in before your pet is bumped into a room ahead of you due to its behavior. Sometimes the wait is long due to lots of emergencies that day. Even if it seems like you're waiting forever or being brushed aside, keep a smile on your face and be as kind as possible. The vet staff is certainly aware that you are waiting a long time and they're doing their very best to help you. They will greatly appreciate the slack you cut them with a smile and a good attitude. Donate to their care fund. Many vets have a care fund set up so that when their customers can't afford vet care, they have an option to help. If your vet has a care fund like this, donating to it may help relieve some of the stress they feel when someone needs help paying for treatment. Although this is an indirect way of helping, letting them know why you are donating lets your vet know you care. Your vet and the staff as well appreciate the thought and care you give back to them. By offering even a small amount of support, you can help reduce your vet's compassion fatigue, one smile at a time. Five Simple Ways to Live Healthier by Lexi Farrell A healthier lifestyle is a goal many people set for themselves, but few achieve. When you think of living a healthy life, you probably think of dieting and working out. We're here to tell you that eating better and working out every day isn't the only way to achieve the goal. Even if you don't have hours to spend in the gym or prepping meals, there are other ways to give your health a boost. One, take vitamins. To function properly, your body needs certain amounts of essential vitamins every day. Now, we know what you're thinking. There are thousands of vitamin supplements on the market, and you aren't sure which ones are right for you. Here are two things you can do. Take a multivitamin. Multivitamins have all the essential minerals and vitamins your body needs in one pill. Make an appointment to see your doctor and get blood work so you can see which specific nutrients your body is lacking. This is a great way to determine exactly what your body needs. Two, drink enough water. Believe it or not, the amount of water you drink can determine how healthy you are. Water is essential, and if you don't drink enough, your body will tell you. Staying properly hydrated can improve so many things, such as headaches, body aches, bloat, your skin, your hair, your energy levels. Anything you can imagine, water can help. If you constantly feel hungry, try drinking water. It'll curb your cravings. Three, get enough sleep. Sleep is essential for your body to recover overnight. Whether you are fighting an illness or under massive amounts of stress, Sleep is amazing for your body. Make sure your sleeping area is dark and quiet. The better you sleep, the better you feel. Four, think positive. Your mindset can play a major role in how your body feels. If you think negatively, your body will sense it and you'll constantly feel tired and angry. If you think only positive thoughts, your body will help you by giving you more energy and making you happier and healthier. Five, exercise. We know we said exercise isn't the only way to live a healthier lifestyle, but it's one of the best and most obvious ways. Now, we aren't saying you need to spend hours in the gym, but even by walking 30 minutes every day, you're living a healthier life. Walking increases your lungs' ability to breathe in oxygen, and more oxygen helps your body function and recover faster. Living a healthier lifestyle doesn't mean just spending more time in the gym or creating an intense diet for yourself. Doing those things is only going to make you resentful and you'll never stick to it. By doing these five things, you'll make major improvements in your health and it won't feel like a burden. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Hi, this is Shay, and I want to tell you about my new show on Pet Candy, Cooking with Shay. I make vegan eating easy and fun. Check it out on Pet Candy TV. Want to participate in a research study? This is the one. 
Enrichment is an important part of every animal's health and well-being, allowing the animal to express natural behavior in a safe and healthy manner. Enrichment is often categorized into sensory, environmental, food, social, and cognitive enrichment, and these categories may overlap or be used together to create a well-rounded enrichment experience for an animal. These categories also fall into active, human-guided, and passive, self-guided categories. Captive animals, farm animals, and companion animals can all benefit from enrichment as part of their routine care. This study focuses on enrichment for own dogs in North America and the United Kingdom and how these opportunities affect the dog-human relationship. In the shelter setting, providing passive enrichment opportunities such as frozen Kongs, boxes to shred, toys, or playing different types of music in the kennel area have been shown to benefit the dog's well-being and lessen stress-related behaviors. These passive opportunities are for the dogs only and do not involve human contact aside from placing the items in the dog's kennels. There is also evidence that periods of human contact benefit shelter dogs and improve their welfare. Though both human-animal interactions and passive enrichment have been shown to decrease stress in dogs, there is a lack of data to show how these two concepts could work together and affect the human side of the relationship in companion animals. This study seeks to discover the relationship between human contact through active enrichment and the effect on the dog-human relationship. Adults who own a dog between the ages of 1 and 8 years old will be asked to fill out a survey on their dog's weekly activities, including walks, training, puzzles or treats, and playtime, as well as how the dog owner feels about offering these activities. They will also be asked to give a basic history on their dog, such as where they acquired the dog, breed, and current medical or behavior issues they are treating. Participants will also fill out the Monash Dog Owner Relationship Scale, MDORS, survey, which will be used to measure their overall satisfaction with owning a dog. With this information, relationships between types of enrichment, frequency of enrichment, breed, age, and dog owner satisfaction may be found. By exploring how the dog owner relationship is affected when owner guided, active enrichment is provided, the study may be able to support recommendations of enrichment activities, improve own dog welfare, and provide mutually beneficial activities to dog owners that strengthen their bond. To learn more, click on the link below. Why you need to walk with a purpose. Walking with a purpose especially walking to get to work, makes people walk faster and consider themselves healthier, a new study has found. The study published online earlier this month in the Journal of Transport and Health found that walking for different reasons yielded different levels of self-rated health. People who walked primarily to places like work and the grocery store from their homes, for example, reported better health than people who walked mostly for leisure. We found that walking for utilitarian purposes significantly improves your health and that those types of walking trips are easier to bring into your daily routine, said Golsa Akar, an associate professor of city and regional planning at The Ohio State University Knowlton School of Architecture. So basically, both as city planners and as people, we should try to take advantage of this as much as possible. The study used data from the 2017 National Household Travel Survey, a U.S. dataset collected from April 2016 to May 2017. The researchers analyzed self-reported health assessments from 125,885 adults between the ages of 18 and 64. Those adults reported the number of minutes they spent walking for different purposes, from home to work from home to shopping, from home to recreation activities, and walking trips that did not start at their homes. Respondents ranked how healthy they were on a scale of 1 to 5. The data set the researchers analyzed included more than 500,000 trips. The researchers, a car and Ohio State doctoral student Gil Supay, found that walking for any duration, for any purpose, increased how healthy a person felt. But they also found an additional 10 minutes of walking per trip from home for work-based trips, say from a person's house to the bus stop 10 minutes away, 
increased that person's odds of having a higher health score by 6% compared with people who walk for other reasons. People who walked from home for reasons not connected to work, shopping, or recreation were 3% likelier to have a higher health score. And, the researchers found, people who walked for work walked faster, on average about 2.7 miles per hour, than people who walked for other reasons. People who walked for recreational purposes, say an after-dinner stroll, walked on average about 2.55 miles per hour. The researchers also found that walking trips that begin at home are generally longer than walking trips that begin somewhere else. The team found that 64% of home-based walking trips last at least 10 minutes, while 50% of trips that begin elsewhere are at least that long. Carr has studied the ways people travel for years and said she was surprised to see that walking for different purposes led to a difference in how healthy people believed they were. I was thinking the differences would not be that significant, that walking is walking, and all forms of walking are helpful, she said, and that is true. But walking for some purposes has significantly greater effect on our health than others. Akar said the findings suggest that building activity into parts of a day that are otherwise sedentary, commuting by foot instead of by car, for example, can make a person feel healthier. That means going to a gym or a recreation center aren't the only ways to exercise, she said. It's an opportunity to put active minutes into our daily schedules in an easy way. Four Companies Who Are Changing Our Environment Lauren Hodges With much of the world coming to terms with the state of our planet, Many companies are popping up that are doing their part to help restore Earth back to its natural, healthy state. There is always more that can be done besides recycling and waste reduction, and these four companies are making quite the impact. One Tree Mission You may have seen advertisements for One Tree Mission when watching your favorite show on Hulu or Netflix. This company plants one tree for every single bracelet that is purchased. The trees are planted globally through their collaborators and helps ensure that no wild animal goes without a home of their own. Each bracelet is adjustable, uses recycled cord, and contains semi-precious stones that are unique to each bracelet. They are all handmade by the company and cost no more than the monthly subscription fees you pay to watch TV. Sea Shepherd, a company that aims to protect our oceans and its wildlife, Sea Shepherd goes above and beyond for their fish friends. The goal of this world-renowned company is to protect endangered species, combat against the hunting of ocean mammals such as whales, sharks, porpoises, etc., and assist in decluttering all of our oceans. They want to do more than just raise awareness. They want to, and do, act every single day to help keep our oceans and its habitants safe. To support them, visit their website and purchase some t-shirts to help raise awareness of this incredible company. Econel Econel is by far one of the most innovative of the environmentalist companies and or products that I have found recently. This company, which hosts the same name as the product they sell, collects nylon from land and sea and repurposes it. The nylon products they sell are referred to as Econel, It can be recycled and refurbished countless times into varying products. Econo believes that we can drastically decrease the amount of nylon products being tossed into landfills and into oceans after their time has come to an end, and they found a way to do it. Many companies are jumping on board with this product and using it to make their own products. Burio Burio is a small company located in Chile. They take discarded fishing nets found in trash, on beaches, and at sea, and they refurbish them. What makes this company unique is that they aren't just making the fishing nets reusable again. They are actually melting the netting down into what is called Net Plus pellets and making various products out of them, including skateboards, threads, and sunglasses. There is so much that we can do for our environment. Take some time to check out these companies or do some research of your own. You never know what you can find because after all, a simple purchase of a bracelet can plant a tree. We'll 
We'll be right back with more pet candy. Pet Candy Radio delivers world-class content with engaging voices and inspirational messages curated by a network of top influencers and experts. Stream 24-7 at MyPetCandy.com. Want to bond more with your cat? Do this by A.M. Kuska. Cats can be flighty animals, and winning their affection isn't always easy. If you want to form a better connection with your pet, new research suggests you can bond with them by blinking slowly with them. You've probably had a cat looking at you sleepily with those long, heavy blinks that almost make you want to yawn. Those blinks, however, may actually be a form of communication meant to form positive bonds with you. If you've spent a lot of time with cats, you're probably already very familiar with those special blinks cats tend to give. And it probably doesn't surprise you that cats enjoy this kind of blinking. Cat owners have long been aware of this phenomenon, but very little research has ever been done on the blink and what it truly means from the cat's perspective. Cats like slow blinks. According to a study published in the journal Scientific Reports, that slow blink is a sign of trust and comfort. When you slow blink back, you are telling them that you trust and are comfortable around your pet. Researchers don't believe that the blink means I love you or is a sign of affection, but simply a sign of trust. In order to find out how cats reacted to human slow blinking at them ranging from strangers to their owners, the researchers set up a trial to divide the two. In the trial, a group of 21 cats from 14 households were videotaped while they watched their owner slow blink with no one else in the room. The process was repeated again with researchers in the room, but not doing anything. Finally, the process was repeated again with a different set of 24 cats. But this time, the researcher was the one doing the slow blink versus a neutral expression. After each expression, the researchers would then extend a hand toward the cat. The research found that slow blinking is an effective form of communication with cats. The cats were more likely to slow blink back if their owners did it first. And in the trials with the researchers, who were strangers, a cat was more likely to approach the extended hand of a researcher who had slow blinked first. More research is needed. Although this study clearly showed cats respond to slow blinking, it's not yet clear why. One theory is that when a person is slow blinking, they're not staring hard at the cat, something cats view as aggressive. Regardless, if you want to bond more with your pet or even make friends with someone else's cat, you now have a new tool in your arsenal to do so. The researchers recommend that you try it out and suggest narrowing your eyes like you would do for a smile before slowly blinking, and then watch to see if the cat copies you. You may be able to start a sort of conversation with the cat simply by how you close your eyes. April is Heartworm Awareness Month by Shannon Gregoire. Heartworm is an endemic parasite found to be very common in the South and Southwestern United States. There were approximately 1.1 million dogs who tested positive in 2019 alone. Even areas of the U.S. where heartworm wasn't considered common, such as the Northeast and West Coast, is slowly increasing with positive cases over the years. Heartworm is a blood-borne pathogen given to dogs through mosquito bites, which makes this disease hard to control when mosquitoes are everywhere. We use a quick blood test to screen your pet for presence of these heartworms so that we can determine if prevention or treatment is the course of action. Heartworm. That is why the best prevention for pets is to take a once-a-month preventative in the form of a treat, so that if your pet was bit by a mosquito that had heartworm, it would be killed before it can cause harm to your pet. It is very important to give the preventative at the same time every month to be the most effective. It is always better to invest a small amount of money every month to prevent heartworm than it would be to pay for the expensive and lengthy surgery to remove and kill off heartworms once they have developed in your pet. 
As always, consult with your veterinarian to answer any questions or concerns regarding your pet's health and safety around any medical conditions, including heartworm. As a team, you and your vet can have great success in keeping your pet healthy and living their best life. Thank you for listening to Pet Candy Magazine. Subscribe today to keep up with everything pets. It's Pet Candy. Pet Candy. Pet Candy. It's Pet Candy Radio.